On the left side, you're gonna see the server list you are administrator of. We're gonna go with AppBot tutorial. The bot comes with a default application. You can use this one or create a new one. We're gonna go with the default example. First, you have to go to App Start tab. Select the channel to which you want to send the message. This will contain the button for your users to initiate the application process. Then the log channel where all completed apps are gonna be submitted to. Push the vertical blue button to send this message to Discord. You are now ready to add questions to the application. When a question has buttons, you can optionally add a role tied to each button. This role will only be assigned to the user when his application is accepted. For questions accompanied by buttons, only responses submitted through these buttons will be considered valid, else if a question is presented without buttons, it should be answered only with text. For each application, a thread is created. You can see the user-selected role in the answers. Upon accepting, the role is assigned to the user. This concludes the basic setup introduction. The second part of this tutorial will explain features that allow for personalized configuration of the application. When inviting the bot to your server, you can deselect the administrator permission. If you do so, remember to assign proper permissions for each channel you wish to use. If you need the bot to assign roles, remember to drag its role above them. When creating applications, you can have five of them in the same group. You can drag and drop apps between groups. There can only be five applications per group. When applications are grouped, they're gonna have their respective button in the same message. You can select a role that is gonna be pinged each time a new application is created. Remember the role cannot have more than 100 members. In the accept and deny settings, you can customize which roles are gonna be added or removed and which messages are gonna be sent in which channel, either as a direct message, a channel message, or within the same thread. On the top right corner, you see add user to thread toggle. If enabled, the thread is gonna become private. In private threads, users can only be added by pinging, regardless of channel permissions. If the toggle is disabled, it means the thread is public. You can then edit the default Discord permissions to set who and who cannot see the thread. This way you can prevent the applicant from seeing his application, even if pinged in it. This approach is useful in cases where only certain staff roles should have access to the applications. On the OnSubmit event, you can also conditionally ping a role in the thread based on the role selected by the applicant. Additionally, if a user selected a role during the questionnaire, you can direct message them or send a message to a channel on the accept event. In the right column, you'll see the application preview. When a question exceeds 200 characters, a text input field will appear where you can enter a shortened version of the question to be displayed in the thread instead. Below the preview are the Accept and Deny buttons. Clicking on these will give you the option to set up a placeholder for when staff members click the Accept or Deny buttons. This placeholder can serve as a reminder or hint for your staff to explain their decision to accept or deny an application. Any text entered by the staff will be included in the confirmation embed sent to the thread. Further down, you'll find the Enable Voting Poll option. This allows anyone with access to the thread to vote. If the threshold is reached, the application will be automatically accepted or denied.
You can combine this with the permission settings, for example, if you allow only certain staff roles to directly accept the application, enabling voting means that anyone else with access to the thread can still participate in the voting process. Within the Discord tab, applicants can be prompted to authenticate right after the final question in order to complete the application. For Discord servers, it is essential to activate developer mode. Then right-click on any server to acquire its ID, then paste this ID into the designated field. If the applicant is a member of any of these servers, this information will be displayed at the end of the application thread. When incorporating the STEAM question, it is mandatory for applicants to provide their STEAM profile link. Additionally, you may specify a list of games for the bot to check. Designated roles can be assigned on the Accept event, based on whether the user owns the specified game, the number of hours played, and recent activity. This information is going to be displayed at the end of the application. As an interoperability example between Discord and Steam, should the applicants have or be required to have their Steam profiles already linked in their Discord account, you may bypass the Steam question and enable linked account authentication. Their profile URL will be utilized to verify game's ownership. Discord offers a feature known as linked roles where a role is assigned only if a specific criteria is met, such as linking a Steam account. In the Permissions tab, you can set the prerequisite of having the Steam-linked role to initiate the application. With Premium Subscription, you'll gain access to limitless amount of apps. Additionally, you have the option to set a welcome message for users joining your server. You will also have access to what Discord refers to as context menu. This tool allows you to right-click on any user, whether in the user list as the message sender or in voice chat, to retrieve a list of current and past application links. For questions or feedback, join our Discord server, links in the description.